It's home design time, and Hamish is here with tips to remove, reduce, and resist unruly mould. Morning, Hamish. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good. Nobody likes mould, do they? No. Well, I mean, this is the thing. We spend so much time um, making our houses look beautiful and pretty, and we decorate them lovely inside the house, and then uh, it's all spoiled by mould, either coming through the mm. ceiling or being on your furniture and stuff yeah, like and that. Yeah, it's not healthy, is it? Not healthy at all. No, it, it's not healthy. Uh, you know, and uh, when you start to look at it, there can be many underlying issues that can cause it. I mean, oh, we all know things uh, such as, uh, you know, checking your insulation yes. and all that sort of stuff. And ventilation is very important as well. And we, we know these Hugely things. Important. Well, most of us do. So have you got any super tips for us? OK, I, th I think the key here is um, once you've done all the other things we all know to do, there are certain things things you should do, be doing at home. And ventilation is key. So, I mean, obviously some people put in ventilation systems, but it can be as simple as right now, basically cracking some windows to let a bit of air flow through mm -hmm. the house. Yeah. I mean, it's not uncommon. What happens is we all get up in the morning, we shower, we cook, we create steam, we create moisture. We've been sleeping in a bedroom, maybe with the bedroom door shut. The house is full of moisture, and then off to work we go. Yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you what I noticed just recently, actually, it's because you brought this up, because I pulled the bed out, mm. and where the mattress sits along the wall, there was a little bit of mould. Absolutely, and, and the funny thing is we often put um, our headboards and our heads and bedrooms against external walls. That's right. And external walls can be one of the main problem areas that you see. Um, particularly if you have a wardrobe on an exterior wall. Typically okay. you should not have one, right. but it does occur. You know, the end of a wardrobe in certain rooms can be on the outside. That's an area that's exposed to the, um, the cooling and the dampness moving through the, uh, the walls of the house. A lot of older homes like that, more modern homes, you don't really seem to get the right. problem now. We've right. got cavities to stop moisture. You've got, you know, suffete details now, so you don't run into issues there. Mm -hmm. Insulation is the walls, which stops the imbalance, and of course, um, double glazing and stuff like that. Right, okay, so there's some, some really good tips there. Is there anything technical that we can use? Yes, now um, you can get a hydrometer, okay? okay. So <laughs> I think here's, here's the key. If you've cleaned your house down, and you've removed the mould, and there's still a problem occurring, you should get something like a hydrometer so you can check. There we are, picture on the screen. Okay, cool. I mean, you're talking about something from your DIY, or your hardware store, between seven and twenty odd dollars. Oh, nice. It's not an expensive thing to get, but what it's going to let you uh, be able to do is to actually quantify how much moisture is in a room or in part of a room and you should probably measure this daily to plot it across a week so you can see if there's Good an tip. actual problem yeah. or if it's just a problem across a few days. Right, yeah, cause, you know, just steam from the shower. If you're having a shower and you leave the doors open and the steam rolls into the room next door, it can, you know, cause some really big problems. It can. can. So I mean, you really, monitor it. We like it. Yeah, monitor it. I mean, you really don't want anything over 65% um, percent humidity in the room. So if you, you're consistently bringing up 65 it's probably going to be a slightly bigger problem. And areas that can occur are, is um, maybe you should actually go and check your roof. Okay. Uh, this is before yeah. winter comes. It's funny how if you've got a concrete roof, you can get a crack in the, uh, the grouting up on the top and the pointing. Maybe a little bit of moisture is getting in just over one part of the roof, and that's why you're, you're getting moisture leading to mould. Um, houses that don't have suffetes, a lot of these built in the 1980s. Okay. Um, spouting goes in, you know, it hangs off the side, no suffete iron. Building paper runs down underneath it. That ah. building paper on a 35-year-old house can have receded and broken down over the years, which means water is actually moving back in with a, the wind. Um, if your spoutings and downpipes haven't been cleaned out, you know, it could be splashing back in. Right. There can be lots of problems. OK, good. Well, I'm loving all this. So now that we've identified the mould, how do we get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, there are plenty of options out there. I mean, look, we've all been told how to remove mould. You can Google it and you can find countless products from your, your local department stores. But if you want something a little bit more, uh, shall we say, environmentally sound, or if you're oh, in that way like. inclined, yeah. you know, you can use uh, white vinegar um, and even more cost effective something like methylated spirits. But once again, if you're cleaning it off and it's coming back, it could be a sign of a bigger problem. Right, okay. What if you've got mould on your furniture? Do you have to get rid of the furniture? What about clothes as well? Do you have to it, get rid of it all? Well, I mean, I've had mould on my clothes and my shoes, and because my wardrobe was damp and I didn't have a hippo, <laughs> damn it. Um, it might have been because the wife sent all my clothes down to the spare room, which very rarely gets opened up. But that's a, that's a debate for another time. Time. Well, at least she's not sending you down to the spare room. That's exactly right. Um, uh, yes, I ideas there. If it gets into soft furnishings, it can be hard to remove. If you've got a couch, for example, and it's got really inundated with mould through it, it might be time for it to go. This is why you probably don't want to have your couch hard pressed up against the wall. Yeah, Because this is it. People sort of fit things in. Uh, things I've seen that are a bad idea, Mike, with, with soft furnishings, which is you know, highly susceptible to it, mattresses put on floors. 
wow, that's a bad idea. True. The moisture content builds up under the bed, and I've seen it rock carpet out. Right, okay. So you need, well, to, think yeah, about, no, <laughs> you need to think about what you are putting underneath your bed. But I think the, the key to it really is going to come down to if there's no major problem, then the problem really is ventilation and how you're dealing with moisture in the home. So think about things. There are options, shower domes, home ventilation systems, etc. Nice work. Okay, and just, just quickly before mm -hmm. you go, what's a good preventative? Because mould can spread, so we've found it. There, there are a, a few products out on the market now. There are certain types of carpet that have mould inhibitors in them. Yep. They've got like, um, I need to check my word for this, poly or plastic additives in them. That might not sound so exciting, but it's pretty good if you don't want mould to eat it. Brilliant. People have seen the carpet getting eaten around the edges. That's carpet beetle because the wool carpet's got too much moisture. Nice. There's a problem there. Other things you can get, paint additives, and um, companies like Resine sell additives for your paint as mould inhibitors. They also sell you stuff to help clean the mould off your ceiling safely. Brilliant. Okay, good work. That was great. Thank you. I learned a lot today. Thank you so much, Hamish.